I received a phone call from um, a gentleman moving house and in the attic uh, was a box of various items that his mother had given to him and it just remained there since her death many years ago. But the house move made him look at all the things in the attic and he gave me a call and he said, I have got a dress and various other items which belong to a, a great maiden aunt of his called Miss Clara Herbert. And I said, please bring them to me. And out of his trunk, he took the most incredible satin pearl beaded dress, these beautiful Honiton appliqued silk lady stockings this needle case and hundreds literally hundreds of photographs and letters and postcards and even diaries all relating to miss clara herbert and her time as a paid companion to the late and the last queen of madagascar rana valona the third miss herbert hailed from muckross house county kerry southern ireland and she was of genteel birth, but they didn't have a lot of money. She was a brilliant linguist. She spoke many languages. She saw an advert advertising for a companion in the far-flung island of Madagascar to the Queen and her family, no less. In the late 1890s, the intrepid Clara Herbert set out to join them in the exotic island of Madagascar. Madagascar is an extraordinary island. It's a very beautiful place. It's like a paradise on earth, especially in the 19th century when Ranalova III was the queen. It's a, a very large island and it's situated off the, the coast of South Africa. But unfortunately, the French political powers of the day decided that they fancied Madagascar too. And so from the 1880s onwards, they kept attacking Madagascar, putting soldiers into Madagascar and basically trying to turn it into one of their colonies. And in 1895, they finally succeeded. Ranilova was allowed to remain as a puppet monarch, as a figurehead for a short while. But in 1896, they abolished the monarchy and it was decided that she and her family were to be sent into exile. The women were woken up at half past one in the morning and they were taken to the coast and put on a ship. Alongside her, as always, was her aunt, Princess Razmindrazana, who was a little bit older than her. She had helped incite rebellion in Madagascar against the French and they really would have quite liked to have executed her, as they did with many of her co-male conspirators. But because she was a lady, she was put on, on the ship as well. The group of women included her older sister and her sister's uh, son and daughter. The daughter was only 14 years old, but she was heavily pregnant. Um, she'd had a liaison with a French officer and when they arrived at the island of Réunion, this poor young girl gave birth, but she survived only five days more. And the little girl was called Marie-Louise, and she became the heir apparent to Queen Ranilova III. Although Ranilova III is rumoured to have ordered lots of gowns from the French fashion houses, the dress that we have in this collection, which belonged to her extremely influential aunt, Princess Ramazan Drazana, is, in my opinion, um, a copy made in Madagascar. The colours are not typical of a Paris fashion house. And the beading and the broadery, though lavish, isn't really haute couture standard for that time. It's a cotton velvet rather than a silk velvet which makes me feel that um, this is something that in Madagascar they'd have been able to get their hands on more easily. And although uh, Ranilova is also photographed around the time in a sort of a lovely black um, embroidered satin gown, which might have been by Worth, I'm afraid her aunt's one definitely isn't. They only stayed in Réunion for two years. All the photographs show them looking very miserable. Ranilova and her entourage 
who were fashionable women. They wanted to enjoy life still. And so they were sent further away from Madagascar, not to France, which is what they'd hoped, but to Algiers, French Algiers. When the Queen learned that their final destination was to be Algeria, she burst into tears and declared, who is certain of tomorrow? Only yesterday I was a queen. Today I am simply an unhappy, broken-hearted woman. There, they began to have a little bit more fun in their lives. We have lots of photographs from 1900 onwards which show Ranilova and Razamindrana looking fabulous in the best fashions with extraordinary hats and feather boas and just having a really nice time. In 1901, the French authorities relented and allowed uh, Razamindrana and uh, Ranilova to visit France, to go on a little holiday. They went to Paris, they went to Versailles, wherever they went, they were followed and they were photographed and they became a, a cause célèbre and the, the French people took them to heart and basically petitioned the colonialist authorities to give Ranilova a bit more money so that she could go shopping a bit more in Paris and, and other places. Miss Herbert remained a faithful servant, companion, but overall a friend. And she stayed with these strong women until Ranilova III died uh, at the age of 55 in 1917. Then her aunt, Rasmindrana, was finally given permission to leave the island and she went to live in the south of France with Miss Herbert um, and Miss Herbert remained with her until she died. Although Queen Ranilova was never allowed to return to Madagascar during her lifetime, about 20 years after her death, her body was exhumed and she was reinterred in her homeland. So her resting place finally was Madagascar. And what happened to Miss Herbert? Well, after Ranilova's aunt died, she went on another adventure, it seems. And her family tell me that she went to China and became a missionary out there. She died in the 1930s. And so we have all these lovely letters and cards and photographs that really tell the poignant story of the last Queen of Madagascar and the incredibly brave women who surrounded her.